Thank you, Angela. That's exactly what it is, an exciting initiative, an exciting experiment. It's called Resonance. Uh, the subtitle of the Resonance uh, initiative is Science, Art, and Politics. I have added here another subtitle that says the first Jersey experiment to get them out of their silos. The initiative uh, started from an idea of our general director uh, that was enacted and make, made possible by Frank Ross, that is sitting in the audience, Adrian X and Paul Learn that have been supervising this bunch of scientists that for a while tried to play the artists. The idea was exactly to see this, to what extent science, art, and politics that have always been acting independently for, for several decades, if not centuries, could come together again in a way uh, that could have, we could have them resonating and we, they could exchange whatever positive they could give to each other. So this is the, the facts. Uh, the Sign Art Policy Festival took place in October 2015. You have a full accountancy in this catalog, that is the catalog of the festival. It is here available in, in some copies with, with all the acknowledgements to the participants. I cannot really go through the whole, uh, the whole uh, setup, but the idea is to have uh, GRC scientists to become artists, to translate science concepts in artistic representation, to interact with artists in an attempt to get infected with their views. And, uh, and uh, I've been one of them, and I will try to get to tell you what is left in me. In fact, what you will get here is not very much the uh, resume of the results of the, of, the, of the festival, but mainly my point of view as, a, as, a, as an acting element of this initiative. So we set up, uh, after months of, of work, we set up this installation downtown Milan in coincidence with the expo uh, 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 activities. Uh, so we had installation of different kinds. I put up uh, a number of years. We had professional installations like uh, this one with, where you had cubes with different colors where kids could uh, walk in or crawl in and appreciate how colors are combined when you put uh, bl uh, blue, gr uh, green, and, 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 uh, and, uh, and red together. Uh, we had the, the counterpart to, uh, to the tree of life, uh, that it was here uh, our tree of life, a real tree with branches representing the different continents and symbols representing the scarcity or abundancy of natural resources, the role of animals in science, or how science imitates mathematics, or the other way around with the seeds of the, of the sunflower organizing themselves like a, a Fibonacci spiral. We have public events, uh, public talks, and so on and so forth, but you can see everything in here. <clears throat> what I want to talk about is, is the installation I've been participating in together with other two people. Uh, we wanted to en enact uh, geoengineering. So we all know what, the, what geoengineering is. In particular, is the radiation management part of geoengineering. So seeding the stratosphere with reflecting particles so that we can reduce the input of <coughs> sunlight and reduce the energy budget of the, of the Earth system and therefore cool, cool off or, or counteract the effect of global warming. Now, this is the idea. Uh, this has this been explored in, in science with numerical simulations and so on and so forth, but nobody really knows what could be the, count, the, the side effects. So how did we put this in, in artistic form? We had this sliding uh, frame to which we attached the surface that we covered with a number of pieces of textiles of different textures and colors so that it could look like a satellite image of the Earth. And then I've been hanging these umbrellas on top to give an idea of the human intervention in the attempt to shield the surface from sunlight. Of course, this is all nice, colorful, and, and gay, but there's a, there's, a, there's a downside. So this would be the representation of the concept itself in an artistic form, but when you do an artistic thing, you have to think uh, beyond that, and you have to try to convey messages. And this is why here, over this cube, explanatory cube, uh, we put this little statue of Albert Einstein 
that is solar power, uh, powered, and rather than having like the Queen Elizabeth equivalent, her hand waving at the crowds, is inviting the viewer to think. So you have this hand that keeps on going. So there was this type of contrast between the, the nicefulness of the, of the representation and this little thing in the tiny little corner that somebody could imagine what is he there for and what is, why is he there, and was basically a hint to invite people to think that not everything that science does could potentially do good. Uh, depends very much on the way we use it. Of course, this is an interpretation. This was our interpretation. Uh, somebody liked it, somebody didn't like it, somebody understood it, somebody did not, but probably this is the whole story, is it not? I'll come back to this, I'll come back, back to this by the end of the talk. The points that I would like to raise to discussion, because Angela invited me to be pr provocative or to put up issues for discussion, is what is that is common to science and art. I will leave aside politics uh, for, 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 for reasons of time. So I think they, they, uh, they uh, share imagination. Uh, they are mutually inspiring. They can communicate if they, if they join forces. And then by the end of, of the talk, I will talk about uh, more uh, specifically about the way they can resonate. Well, in, uh, uh, concerning imagination, I, I recently followed this uh, public lecture by, uh, from the director and president of LSE, which I happen to know it's, a, it's also a prominent sociologist, that was called Can Imagination Change the World? And it's, it w it's a very interesting talk that I would like you to listen to. And he's actually saying imagination is not something that does not belong to the world. It belongs to the world. It can shape things, uh, material things here and now, or it can allow us to imagine uh, future worlds, utopias, dystopias, uh, even, <coughs> even ways of governance. So it's part of the mental process of man. And this is very much shared by, by art and, uh, and science. Uh, personally, I think that that science, the, bigger, the biggest leaps that science has done uh, over, over the course of, of history are, are, are done when imagination is put at work rather than sequential steps of formal application of the different rules of science. <clears throat> In terms of inspiration, we all know what is the inspiration that art has produced on everyday life or, or, or human history, and in particular on science. Uh, from the literature, uh, literature point of view, there are a number of, of, uh, of non-scholarly works that have been shaping uh, societal changes, uh, scientific changes, technological changes, and the other way around as far as science to art. <clears throat> I don't think I have to indulge that much in, in this because these are things that are very well known to everybody. Uh, I will, well, this is very nice. This is the, the first uh, uh, laptop use uh, in a Greek uh, piece of mar marble. Anyway, uh, continuing on inspiration, there has been inspiration from the, from, from the, lit from the literature production, uh, as well as, as uh, movies and TV series, and, and being myself a tracker by nature and by education, I cannot uh, avoid to indulge a little bit on Star Trek. So this is, these are, this is technology presented in the 1950s. This is the universal translator that now we have on a website. But this one translates Klingon. The website doesn't. Uh, we have a tablet here. We have a communicator. This, this is the pin that every crew member of, of, of every starship has on his, on his space suit. You push it and you communicate with everybody. Now we put it in our here. I don't know why. Uh, then we have. Then we have uh, the telephone that was already conceived as a tricorder, and this design has already been surpassed because it was fashionable in the 90s. Uh, but let me go back a bit, because there's another piece that I would like you to appreciate. Computer, this is Lieutenant Commander Data. Please access all Starfleet command orders to starships, star bases, and colonies for the last six months. Now, if you take the words Starship Command, Starships, star, star Bases, and you substitute it with Starbucks, this is exactly the conversation that happens thousands of times every day whenever everybody is looking for a coffee shop, is it not, through a mobile. So this is the way in which uh, uh, art influences science. But well, going back to a more serious note, I would like to uh, uh, bang the gang, gong the gong. Uh, 
Anyway, uh, these are some considerations that are put together in terms of my impression uh, relating to what I got from the festival. Uh, I will not go through this list. Uh, what I liked about being a scientist and, and trying to become an artist is the fact that when you try to put a scientific concept in an artistic form, it, tem it tends to become more general. You have to think about it not in terms of conveying the scientific message, but make it more general. Think about all the different facets, different, different possible angles of view, and so on and so forth. And this is what I consider to be inspirational. In fact, in fact I talk about notion and emotion. You have to put together something that conveys a message that is certain, but that stimulates emotions that can be varied, and the most varied one, from the positive to the negative. One minute for this, for this, this that is, this is the essence, uh, the resonance, what I consider to be the resonance between science and art. I took here the Tacoma Bridge analogy. What is the Tacoma Bridge? It's a bridge that in 1940, due to wind, uh, started to oscillate. The, the wind resonated with the bridge, and the oscillation became so large that the bridge collapsed. So I take this analogy, I consider science the bridge and art the wind. What do they have in common? The red ones are damping frequencies. The green one are exciting frequencies. So science is, is constrained by rules. Uh, art, is, is, uh, uh, art rules is no rule. Uh, both of them are still based on imagination. Uh, one is seeking for knowledge, understanding, and predicting. The other one is wants to represent the human conditions and try to imagine its future. Uh, one is based on proven facts and the other one on, on individual emotion. One is influenced by societal needs, the other one influenced or is influenced by societal changes. Improving the human condition is an ultimate goal, but one is acquired through awareness, use uh, of acquired knowledge, and the other one through emotion and empathy. Now, what is the essence here? Do we think that science and art can come together and collaborate? I think there are common grounds here, personally. The, the, the important aspect here is how we can have them to collaborate but avoid that the bridge gets destroyed. Because this, this resonance can happen, these frequencies can come together, they contribute to a common goal, but we have to avoid the, the wind to, uh, to, to the, the bridge to become destroyed, to, come, to get destroyed, and the wind to end up flowing in empty space. I'm done. Thank you.